So more news from China. They've flown their new tailless stealth fighter. Uh, there's a picture out. We'll take a look. And also there's a video of a, a rendering of the new J-36, which has been flying a lot lately. Uh, that's very interesting. So we'll take a look at both of those. So this is the new tailless fighter. It's got a huge nose. It looks small. Like the first thing I'm like, that doesn't look, but you know, there's no obviously scale here. We don't really know what the, you know, the wingspan of this thing is. I'm sure some very smart people can find out, but right off the bat, interesting. You've got the um, nose gear similar to something that would be carrier based. So perhaps uh, not this is some are calling it the j50 jxds it is um, their new fighter it's tailless it's got thrust vectoring it's got uh their articulating wingtips which is um unique i guess unique in in its own way but this looks like fully thrust vectoring super maneuverable don't know about stealth. This is, I mean, this kind of might be still in the test variant. Twin engine. They are flying it out in the open. They are flying it a lot. Um, it, it looks like it's on schedule. Doesn't look like it has much in the way of internal weapons storage. But again, it's hard to tell what the size is. Uh, and I'm wondering if they're going to have hard points like the F-35 and F-22, so you can mount tanks and other weapons. Obviously, you lose stealth when you do that, but, you know, you just, you gain capability because you don't always need stealth, right? Stealth can be overcome. Sometimes you just need the ability to carry a bunch of missiles and bombs and stuff like that. That might be on the nose there, the electro-optical targeting system, that little bulge. Uh, looks like something that you would have uh, like the F-35 did with the EOTs, but um, very interesting uh, indeed. They obviously fly them with the gear down initially uh, for the first couple test flights, and then eventually they'll raise the gear, do supersonic tests, do high maneuver testing. But it's interesting because this thing's tailless, and all of these, you know, the flapperons, it's all part of the control surfaces. So uh, no canards, unlike the... Uh, well, we don't know that the F-47 has canards yet, so that could be uh, just part of the, the allure and the mystery. But the F-47 has been flying for a while. Uh, so that's, I mean, it, this doesn't mean that China is super ahead of America. This doesn't mean this is even 6th gen. You know, there's disparity between what the U.S. calls 6th gen, which I'm not sure anybody really has a good definition for 6th gen. And what China calls fifth and sixth gen, et cetera, uh, we kind of get caught uh, stuck in the weeds on labeling generations when it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I mean, see it the merge. It just depends on what it can do. And, you know, China's obviously developing a lot of long range beyond visual range missiles and increasing that tech i'd be interested to see what kind of sensors it has if you know beyond the eots if this big thing is for the the isa that's kind of a pointy nose um but i you just don't know what kind of sensor suite it's going to have in here but it looks like it's going to be super maneuverable uh it could be unmanned you know i mean yes it could be uh, this could be the man version here but there could be an unmanned version and this could be like their ucav because this looks a lot like our uh, UCAF concepts. This is the other video. I want. It's not official or anything. It's just, I thought it was a good way to, to show the J-36 and kind of reveal some details. This is a rendering from the J-36 stuff. You can see, uh, first thing, side-by-side -side seating with one HUD. So, they're still using HUDs. You know, RF-35 got rid of HUDs for the helmet. They're still using that, and we've seen that in their other fighters as well, like the uh, J-20 and such, and their uh, new Fat Amy lookalike. They still run with HUDs, so that looks like a HUD right there. 
side by side seating, much like the B21 or B2. So this is probably a bomber or like the Su-34. Yeah, again, this is an artist rendering. It looks like a moth, but I think it's a good looking airplane. And you've got the three engine with two inlets below and one above. Could be some kind of use for long range, uh, maybe hypersonic, maybe, you know, for uh, scramjet, ramjet kind of stuff. Big beefy gear, two gear there, and then um, the dual gear up front. So that doesn't necessarily mean carrier, uh, although I said that on the J-50 just because that's the fighter, but a lot of bombers do that just because to support the weight of the nose. There's your three engine. Bah! I don't, maybe not on the Ram or Scramjet. This just looks like three of the same engines. They just move the intake. Um, the bottom and side could be an RCS thing. Radar cross section could be just about anything. I'd be worried about what that airflow looks like, like when you eject, right? Like, what does the, does the canopy shell out into the engine? I guess you don't care at that point, but as long as it's not like, yeah, whatever. Again, with the tailless design, everything is tailless in the future. And this is an artist rendering. They could be wrong, but a maneuverable bomber. Looks like a moth or a vegan. I mean, it's good looking. For a bomber, it's not bad looking. Okay, now you're talking the long range stuff, cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, etc. And air to air missiles. So in this rendering, it is also capable of being, and there's the J-50. JXDS as escorts. So an integrated thing, or perhaps like a UCAV, that could have been their UCAV and its quarterbacking as well as shooting. I mean, it makes sense to have the bomber be uh, capable of not only shooting, but being the missile truck and quarterbacking uh, in the future. So very interesting stuff coming out of China. I would not underestimate their capabilities because uh, they are progressing and they are using, they have a robust espionage program and that gives them a lot of, of a head start. I mean, when you don't have to develop everything because you can grab it from different sources, it makes things faster. Plus they don't have the acquisition problems that the United States has. So they are able to more quickly bring things to market because they don't, the bureaucracy is them. They don't have to worry about sourcing stuff contractor stuff it's you know when you own the means of production even if it's a different company name uh and under the threat of death yeah sometimes things work a little faster is that the right thing no but that means they're probably a little bit faster anyway let me know in the comments what you think hope you guys enjoyed this episode thanks for watching see you next time mm -hmm.